Okay, in this video we will be graphing some absolute value functions. Um, one thing to keep in your mind is that uh, the parent function, which would just be the absolute value of x, is going to be in the shape of a v, like this. The parent function starts off at the origin, and then it just goes into a v-shape from there. So this is what the graph of y equals the absolute value of x looks like. Okay, there's some crooked lines, but you get the, you get the idea. So the rest of these will be transformations of this. Okay, so the vertex of the v, the point of the v, um, is going to be shifted according to this and this. Now this minus 2 um, inside the function is actually going to move us to the right 2. And this 5, of course, will move us up 5. So this is going to be right 2 and up 5. So that means the vertex of my v should be right 2 and up 5. So this will be the vertex of my v. Um, so then the slope of the V is up 1 over 1 on both sides. Okay, it's up 1 right 1 and up 1 left 1. So this will be the graph of this function. Okay? And it will always be up 1 over 1 until we start having numbers in front changing the slope. Like if this was uh, 2 over 3 or something in front of the function, then it would be up 2 over 3. All right, But uh, in the absence of any numbers, it's up 1 over 1. All right, so looking at the next function, problem B, Okay, um, so again, this is right 4 up 7. So this would be right 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If this had been a plus 4, then I would go to the left. So this is my vertex. And again, there's no number here that's visible, so it must be a 1. So that's why I'm going to go up 1, right 1. And then I'm going to do the mirror image of that for the uh, left side of the V. So this would be the graph of this function. All right, let's take a look at C. OK, so this will be right 3, down 5. Right 3, down 5. So that'll be my vertex. Still, there's no number showing here, so it'll still be up 1, right 1. And then I'll do the mirror image of that for the left-hand side. And you know, just keep putting dots until you hit the edge of the grid. All right, so this is what this function will look like. Okay, similarly, function D here is going to be right 1, down 6. So there's my vertex. And again, there's no number here, so it'll still be up 1, right 1. And then the mirror image. Okay, so here is the graph for this function. All right, what's next? 
Okay, finally we're getting some um, more interesting problems here. Let's start with the vertex though. With this plus one, that means I will go to the left one. Okay, and again it will be up nine. So left one, up nine. So that's going to be like here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's my vertex. Now, this gives me the slope of the right-hand side of the V. Because it's negative, I'm going to be going down two um, and right three. So uh, you can sort of think of this negative sign like it's on the two. So think down two, right three. So that would be like this, down two, right three. Down two, right three, down two, right three. And then we need the mirror image of that on the left side. So that means, of course, down two, left three. Down two, left three. Down two, left three. So this is what this function would look like. Okay, how about function f? So the minus 2 and the negative 1. So this will be right 2, down 1. So right 2, down 1. So there's my vertex right there. Now the slope. The slope is negative 1 over 1. So I'm going to go down 1, right 1. So that'll be like this. And then I will form this upside down V by doing the mirror image of that. Alright, so that's what this function will look like. Alright, notice that if the um, function has a negative in front, it's going to be an upside down V. Alright, so these two both had a negative in front, so right away I knew that the V would be downward facing. Okay, now on the back here I'm given the graph and I'm supposed to write the uh, function for it. Um, let's see, let's start with knowing what the vertex is. So see how this is to the left one? So that would happen if we had x plus one inside the absolute value sign. Okay, that would give me left one. Um, it is on the x-axis, so it's not up, it's not down, so I'm not going to put anything else on here. Now the slope, I'm going to look at the right-hand side for the slope. It seems to just be going up one, right one. So I really don't need to put anything here for the slope. So that's it for uh, part A. Now part B, again, let's start with this vertex here. See how it is right seven and up two. So for the right 7, that would be x minus 7, right? Because it's sort of the opposite of what you would think. So minus 7 will actually send you to the right by 7. And then up 2, this part is just normal. So uh, it's up 2, so I'll put a plus 2 on the end. Now the slope um, for the number that goes here. Well, again, it seems to just go up one, right one. So the one over one, I don't need to write anything down. So that's the answer. Okay, how about this next one? Uh, let's start with the vertex. It is left three and down six. So left three would be x plus three. Down six would be minus six. Um, looking at the right-hand side, the slope is still just up one, right one, so I don't need anything in front. Okay, how about this one? The vertex is here. Now, there is no left or right. It's on the y-axis. So that's just going to be the absolute value of x. Um, but it is down 9, so I'm going to need a minus 9 on the end. 
Um, and again, it is up one, right one. So I don't need anything in front. That's the answer. Okay, what about this one? This one is left one, up two. So the left one would be x plus one on the inside. The up two would be a plus two on the end. Now this is up one, right one. So if I don't need anything for that slope. Um, so but these are seeming pretty easy. And then this vertex, um, that's right five, down seven. So for the right 5, I need x minus 5. That's right 5. Down 7, that's a minus 7. And again, it is up 1, right 1. So I don't need anything in the front. And that is it for this worksheet. All right, so that's going to be the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. I will see you on the next video.